All right, so this is our first section of 3B, and it is called Expanding Quadratics to Standard Form. So last chapter, we learned vertex form. We are now going to get those into standard form, okay? All right, so we're going to get quadratic equations that aren't in standard form into standard form. So first off, our goal is I can convert quadratics to standard form. Do you know what standard form is? If not, you're probably going to reach yourself pretty low there, which I think everyone's at right now. Okay, so let's learn what standard form is. Standard form of a quadratic, now remember it is a quadratic, so it has x squared in it, okay, is y equals, because it has to be an equation, right? And then the standard form would be ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are numbers, and a can't be zero, okay, but b and c can be. Okay, so also let's recall how to find the perimeter of this rectangle. If I said find the perimeter of the rectangle and it was labeled, what would you do? Well, you would need to know this length and this width, and then you would have to add up all the sides. So I know that this would be the same as it if it's a rectangle, and this would be the same as the width. So I know that the perimeter is equal to the two lengths plus the two widths, all right? Or if you call them bases and heights, the two bases plus the two heights. Right? Or you can do L plus W plus L plus W, but then there's like terms to combine, and that's why we get that formula. Okay? We also need to know the formula for area of a rectangle. Once again, if this is length and this is width, I get the area by doing length times width. Or if you call them base and height, base times height, either one you can refer to it as. Okay? So those are the two things that we need to do to learn this process. So we're going to use the process of finding it with rectangles, um, multiplying these with rectangle, or sorry, getting area and perimeter with rectangles, and then it'll help you understand how to multiply or how to expand to quadratic form. Okay, so find the perimeter and the area of each rectangle. So perimeter is equal to two times the length, which is the four or the six, it doesn't matter, plus two times the width, and then we get what that is. So I have 12 plus 8, which is 20. Now I should have a unit on this, but this is just um, practice. When we get to our area chapter, we'll make sure we have units. All right, area is just length times width. So length times width, 4 times 6, the area is 24. And then it's unit squared, but once again, we're not worried about that just yet. Okay, so this one here, perimeter is equal to the 2 times 7 plus 2 times 12. Okay, so if you want, if you need to be using, a, or if you would like to use a calculator, you can. Okay, um, let me pull mine up just in case I need it at any point. I'll just throw it over here. Um, and then you can just use this for the math that we're doing. So if you want to do 2 times 7 plus... 2 times 12, and have it right there and say that's 38, that's fine. If you're like, I did it in my head, that's even better. Okay, area is equal to uh, 7 times 12, length times width. Area is equal to 84. All right. Okay, so now notice we've introduced x's in them, okay, um, on purpose. So let's do perimeter next. Perimeter equals 2 times your length plus 2 times your width. So your perimeter is, I can't simplify 2x, so I'm just going to write 2x, but 2 times 8 I can't, so 2x plus 16. Let's do our area, length times width, 8 times x, which is just 8x. Okay. All right, or you could have done x times 8, which is 8x, but we just like writing it this way, right, instead of this way. Okay, next one right here, I need perimeter. So I need perimeter is equal to 2 times my length, which I'll say is x plus 4, plus 2 times my width, which is 5. Okay, so this I can clean up by distributing, so let's do that. 2x plus 8, and then this I can clean up by multiplying, so that's 10. But then these are like terms, so I can combine them. So your perimeter is 2x plus 18. 
my area, length times width, so I'm going to do 5 times x plus 4. So now I'm going to distribute that 5. My area is 5x plus 20. Okay, so the whole point of doing what we just did was to be able to do the area of these two. Perimeter, I don't think anyone's going to have an issue with. Area, I'm hoping you don't have issues with, but area is, this is how we expand to standard form, okay? All right, so our perimeter, so I'm going to do P equals 2 times, and then I'll do one of the lengths, which is 2x plus 6, plus 2 times the width, which by default is 3x minus 5. I can distribute here, so that's 4x plus 12. Distribute this to plus 6x minus 10, and then combine like terms. 4x and 6x is 10x, and 12 and negative 10 is 2. So that's your perimeter. No biggie. Okay. Now we need the meat and potatoes here, the area. Okay. So area equals length times width. So 2x plus 6 times 3x minus 5. So Multiplying these two is how you move into standard form, okay? And you're going to see that it happens. So what you're going to do is you're going to look at the first set of parentheses, and you're going to look at the first term right here, and you're going to distribute it to everything in the second set of parentheses. So you're going to do 2x times 3x, which is 2 times 3 is 6, x times x is x squared, so 6x squared. Then you're going to distribute the 2x to the negative 5. 2x times negative 5 is negative 10x. Then you're going to do the same thing with this 6. 6 times 3x is 18x. 6 times negative 5 is negative 30. And then you can combine like terms. So as you can see, we still have like terms right here that need to be combined. And that is... 6x squared plus 8x minus 30, okay? Now, a lot of times this process right here that I just did, it's the distributive property, but it's a lot of times referred to as foiling, okay? Why is it referred to as foiling? Let's look at that process again, okay? So what we did, the first thing we did was multiply these two. That's called F which is, stands for first, okay? You're multiplying the first two terms. Then I distributed to this, and if you notice, those are the outer two terms, outer. I don't know if outer has one or two t's. I'm gonna put two t's, but I don't think it does. All right, then I distributed this six. I did these two, right? Six to this, which is the inner two terms. And then I distribute the six to the negative five, and that's the last two terms in each set of parentheses. So if you look to see what that spells, it spells FOIL, all right, the first letters. So first, outer, inner, last is a mnemonic device to help you remember the order that you distribute or just to distribute everything. All right, let's go ahead and have you pause the video and try this one and see how you do. All right, so perimeter 2 times 6x minus 1 plus 2 times x plus 8. Distribute your 2 here and here, so that is 12x minus 2. Distribute your 2 here and here, so that's plus 2x plus 16. And then combine like terms. 12x and 2x is 14x. Negative 2 and 16 is plus 14. Let's get our area now. Area is equal to length times width, so it doesn't matter if it's which binomial comes first. This is called a binomial because it's two terms, right? So 6x minus 1 times x plus 8. All right, so now we're going to FOIL them or use the distributive property, okay? So you're going to take this 6x and distribute, so the first times the first is 6x squared. Distribute again, so that's outer, 6x times 8 is 48x. Now you're going to distribute the negative 1. Inner is negative x. Distribute the negative 1 again. That's last, which is negative 8, and then combine like terms. Area equals 6x squared. 48x and negative x is 47x, and then minus 8. 
Now, if you look what we have here, this is standard form, okay? You have a equals instead of y equals, but you have 6x squared, where this is ax squared, plus, that's bx, and then plus c, so this is c, right? So a is 6, b is 47, and c is negative 8 in that form, just so you can see that. Okay, so let's try a couple examples using the segment addition postulate, and we'll be sure to write our answers in standard form. So segment addition postulate we did first semester, chapter 1. So let's see if you remember it. Okay, so this says if B is between A and C, find the length of AC. So first off, we have to draw B between A and C. Okay, so let's draw that. Remember, that implies that there is a line. And B is, this will be A and this will be C. And B is somewhere in between. It doesn't say right in the middle. So I like to put it somewhere in between, but not quite the middle. Okay, it says AB is X squared minus 3X plus 21. I'm going to change colors here so it doesn't turn into a blur. So this is X squared minus 3X plus 21. And then it says that BC is 3x squared plus 2x minus 6. Okay. And it says find AC, the whole thing. Okay. So now what I want you to realize is that in the first chapter, if I said solve for x, you can't solve for x, right? If I would have said in the first chapter find AC, you would say not possible, not on information. But in this chapter, all I want to do is make sure that you can practice adding this plus this, right? So let's do that. We're going to do x squared minus 3x plus 21, put that in parentheses, plus 3x squared plus 2x minus 6. Okay, so first thing I want you to notice that this is addition. So all you're going to do is combine like terms. So I don't need all of these parentheses here if it's just combining all like terms. But I put them there to, for you to realize that. Okay, so combine like terms, I have an x squared and a 3x squared, which is 4x squared. I have a negative 3x and a 2x, which is negative 1x, or just negative x. And I have a 21 and a negative 6, which is plus 15. So I have ac is equal to that. So now if you look, that's in standard form. ax squared plus bx plus c. All right, here's another one. B is between A and C, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. Oh, I should paste it, not just move it. Copy. And then I'll paste another one down here. Okay, and I'll erase some stuff, though. There we go. There we go. Okay. So this one says the same. Beginning starts the same. It says AB is X squared minus 3X plus 21. Oh, I already have that labeled. That's great. But then it says AC is 3X squared plus 2X minus 6. So I don't have that labeled properly. This needs to move down here, and then I can say the whole thing is that. Okay. All right, so it's find BC, this one. So once again, if this was in Chapter 1, we would have to solve for X, plug it back in, but we don't have enough information. Here, I just want to say I want my answer to look like this, something like that. So I know to get this, if I know the whole thing was 10 and this was 2, I would do 10 minus 2. Oh, that's 8. But it's this minus this to get BC. So I'm going to do 3x squared plus 2x minus 6 minus x squared minus 3x plus 21. Okay. Now if you look here when this is minus, you can't just delete the parentheses. If this is minus, what you have to do is you have to subtract everything. You have to distribute the subtraction. So I'm going to distribute the subtraction right now. I'm going to do minus. This becomes minus a negative, which is plus. This becomes plus a negative, which is minus, and then I can change this to a plus. Now it's just combining like terms. 3x squared and negative x squared is 2x squared. So notice I did 3x squared minus x squared. 2x and 3x. I did 2x minus a negative 3x, which is 5x. And then I have negative 6 and a negative 21, which is negative 27. So BC is that quadratic. Okay, 
It says our ultimate goal today is to deal with problems like the ones below. So now we're going to actually get to how they look like on the test and on the ACT, SAT. Let's try some examples. Write the answers in standard form. It says multiply out the following expression using what we have seen so far today. So I want you to multiply these two. Okay. All right. So remember, it's just the distributive property. Foil is a mnemonic device to help you remember it. So I'm going to start with this and I'm going to distribute it to everything in here. So I'll distribute this times this, which is called first. 3x times 2x is 6x squared. 3x times 5, or outer, is 15x. Now I have to distribute the negative 4. Okay, so I'm going to do 4 times 2x, or inner. It's negative 8x. And then negative 4 times 5, or last, which is negative 20. Now I can combine these like terms. So I have 6x squared, 15x, and a negative 8x is plus 7x minus 20. Okay, so this is converting it, so now it's in standard form. All right, next one, try this one. All right, so we have to make sure we understand what to do here because a lot of people will say distribute the square. There's no such thing as distributing a square. I want you to realize that. It's like saying, I don't even want to give an example, okay? It's like saying multi-divide apply. It's just a made-up thing. There's no such thing as distributing a square, okay? So no, you don't distribute the square. But to understand how to do this, let me remind you of this. If you saw 4 squared, what does that mean? Okay, and people will always say 16. No, I, I get it. It is 16, but what is 4 squared? What is that the shortcut of writing? It's the shortcut of writing 4 times 4. So the shortcut of writing this 2y minus 3 quantity squared, what's the long way of writing it? Because we have to write it the long way. 2y minus 3 times 2y minus 3. And now we can multiply these two. First times first, 2y times 2y is 4y squared. Outer negative 6y, inner, negative 6y, last, positive 9. Combine like terms, 4y squared minus 12y plus 9. Okay? This one says, watch carefully what happens when you multiply these two. So let's multiply them and see what happens. First times first, x squared. Outer, 3x. Inner, negative 3x. Last, negative 9. Combine my like terms. x squared. 3x and negative 3x cancel, minus 9. So I notice it said watch carefully what happens here. What happens is, is that outer and inner cancel. Okay? These factors are called conjugates. Okay? They are in the form x plus a number. I should put a letter there so that we know it's the same number. So I'll do x plus a times x minus a. Okay. Whenever you multiply them out, outer and inner cancel. So it always is going to simplify to x squared minus whatever a squared is. So like if I wanted to do this one a real fast way, oops, this one a real fast way, I can say, oh, they're conjugates because it's x minus 3 and x plus 3. So outer and inner are going to cancel, so I can just do first and last. First times first is x squared. Last times last is negative 9. Okay? So if you realize it, great. If you don't, no big deal. You'll still get the right answer. Okay. What if there's a number in front? Let's try this one. So my question is, is do I distribute the 3 first? Or do I square the p plus 4 first? Okay, what comes first, multiplication or exponents? 
exponents, right? So I have to do this first. So this is just like the one right, where are you? Here, right? So p plus 4 squared, I have to multiply out p plus 4 times p plus 4. So I'm going to do 3 times p plus 4 times p plus 4, okay? Now I'm going to multiply these two first. I'm going to leave the 3 in front. First, p times p is p squared. Outer is 4p. Inner is 4p. Last, 4 times 4 is 16. I can still combine these like terms. But I'm not done. If this was like the last problem, this wouldn't have been here and I'd be done and that's it and I wouldn't need the parentheses. But there's this 3 in front, so I do have to distribute this 3 to everything. So 3p squared plus 24p plus, um, let me do this in my head, 16 is just 48, duh. And there it is in standard form. So notice so far, everything that we're doing is getting in standard form, even this. A is 1, B is 0 because it canceled out, and C is negative 9. Okay, what do you think we would do with this one? I don't think this one's very difficult. Okay, this one here, you have a number outside of this. There is nothing here, so I can go ahead and distribute. I shouldn't say there's nothing there. There's a 1 there. 7 times Q is 7Q. 7 times negative 1 is negative 7. Okay, same thing here. I can simplify this by distributing a negative 3Q. Negative 3Q times Q is negative 3Q squared. Negative 3Q times 2 is negative 6Q. Looking for like terms, I have a 7Q and a negative 6Q, so I can combine those. Let's make sure we write it in standard form. If we want to write it in standard form, our squared term comes first. That's a negative 3Q squared. Then our non-squared term, which is the one just with Q in it, so I have to combine 7Q and negative 6Q, which is 1Q, or just Q. And then our constant is always last, so minus 7. All right, next. This is a little advanced. This is like an Algebra 2 topic, but I think that you guys will feel comfortable with it. What do you think we would do if I wanted to multiply these two? I can't use FOIL because FOIL only works when it's two terms, which this is, and two terms, which this is not. That's three terms. But remember how we learned to FOIL. It's just the distributive property. So that's exactly what you're going to do here. You're going to distribute the x first to everything in here. So let's do that. x times x squared is x cubed. x times negative 4x is negative 4x squared. x times 3 is 3x. Not done yet. I have to distribute this negative 5 also now. Negative 5 times x squared is negative 5x squared. Negative 5 times negative 4x is 20x. Negative 5 times 3 is negative 15. Now I can go through and look for any like terms. I only have the x cubed. Let's see for x squared. I have a negative 4x squared and a negative 5x squared, which is negative 9x squared. Let's look for x's. 3x and 20x, which is 23x. And then my only constant is minus 15. And there's my final answer. This is not a quadratic. This is called a cubic function. Okay, so the rest of these are just make sure that we're able to multiply. This is how a section of your test could possibly look. This is how your homework for this section will look, okay? So... Let's make sure you know how to do all of them. So let me look ahead here and see. You can try all of them on your own, but you might need a little help with four and five. I'm going to go through all of them. All right, first times first, I'm going to distribute the 5x. 15x squared, distribute the 5x again, or outer. 5x times x is 25x. Distribute the negative 2 or inner, negative 6x. Distribute your negative 2 or last, minus 10. 
combine like terms, 15x squared plus 19x minus 10. This one here, remember x minus 4 quantity, sorry, 4x minus 3 quantity squared means 4x minus 3 times 4x minus 3. So first times first, 4x times 4x is 16x squared. Outer, 4x times negative 3 is negative 12x. Inner, negative 3 times 4x is also negative 12x. Last, negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. These are like terms. They do not cancel out. 16x squared minus 24x plus 9. All right, number 3, I need to multiply these. You might already notice they're conjugates. So if you do notice that, you can just do first and last. But I'm going to pretend like I don't notice it. So first times first, 36x squared. Outer, 48x. Inner, negative 48x. Notice they cancel. Last, negative 8 times negative 8, negative 64. Those cancel. 3x squared minus 64. Okay, next one here. All right, so we all know how to do this, so go ahead and write it out. 2x plus 1 times 2x plus 1. And then when I'm done expanding that, I'm going to have to subtract 8. All right, first times first, 4x squared. Outer is 2x. Inner is 2x. Last is 1. And then minus 8. Combine like terms, 4x squared, 2x and 2x is 4x, 1 and negative 8 is negative 7. Okay, I want you to notice what we just did. This is vertex form. Well, technically it's not because there's a 2 in front, but it's similar to vertex form. We just converted it to standard form. Okay, so that's what we're looking a lot at. We're trying to get one form to another form. So we're trying to get standard form. Okay, go ahead and try this one on your own if you had struggled with the other one. 3x minus 1 times 3x minus 1 squared minus 4. Oops, I don't need the square. I already took care of the square by writing it twice. First times first, 9x squared. Outer, negative 3x. Inner, negative 3x. Last, positive 1, and then minus 4. 9x squared minus 6x minus 3. All right, that's it for expanding quadratics. You can go ahead